radiant wellness conclave. I would like to thank Dr. Renuka David and uh, Colonel David Devasahayam, who are fortunately my neighbors, and all the other distinguished panelists, experts, and also my lovely wife, Saumya Anpumani. Wellness is a holistic concept of self-being. which is both, I mean, the concept of physical well-being, mental, emotional, intellectual, spiritual, social, environmental, and without the financial well-being, you can't achieve the others. I've been giving a top, given a topic of social wellness. Well, I'm going to digress now and then into all the other concepts as well, because being the politician, it is my job to talk about all the other parameters as well. My concept of wellness, or in fact the urban wellness, is we are holding this conference in the most urbanized state in India. And my concept of urbanization itself is, there is a lacuna I don't see urbanization as a progress or a growth of a state. Coming from a rural area, coming from the villages, I see a concept of urbanization being driven to the urban areas by lack of opportunities, by lack of employment, by lack of agriculture, by lack of water, by lack of health care. And the concept of urban wellness and a rural wellness. The urban wellness is self-acquired, it's acquired. Whereas the concept of rural wellness in India is imbibed in our way of life, in a way of our culture, sometimes in a way of our religion, a way of in our beliefs, a way of our food habits, our customs, and the base of everything is our family. India has a lot of advantage moving towards state of wellness. And I would see the biggest advantage India has is the concept of a family system, which is lacking in the western part. We have a fallback on our family system for all our, whether it is uh, emotional issues or uh, marriage issues or intellectual problems, financial problems, we have a huge support group fallback on family and friends. And then as a former health minister, I would like to say that India has a huge system of our Indian system of medicine, we call it Ayurveda. Siddha system, yoga, naturopathy, of course, homeopathy and Yunani has come from Persia and Germany to India. I think we have to address our own system which we are proud of, even though myself being a modern system of medicine, a doctor by my profession, we have to merge both the systems and get the best out of both the systems. In China, they have a concept called traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, where 60% of the clinics in China follow TCM and there are only 40% follow the modern system. When I was a minister during uh, 2004 to 9, I had tried to bring a conversion between convergence between both the systems but unfortunately the Indian Medical Association which I also have a member they had opposed this concept and said that what are we going uh, 
are we going to be a, a homeopathy doctor or an Ayurvedic doctor? There was a lot of protests at that time. But the concept of our system, which has been in us, in our habits, in our food, in our culture, in our customs for thousands of years, which is proven by time, I think we need to imbibe that for a state of well-being. Yoga, founded in India, exported to America, then imported back to India because we follow the Americans. But unfortunately, the concept of yoga, the scientific evidence of yoga, I think Dr. Rene is there, Nene is here, and he could vouch for that. Where uh, in Harvard and Johns Hopkins, they had validated, they had scientifically validated uh, yoga reduces hypertension, reduces blood pressure, reduces uh, diabetes. And then when we followed it, I think we need to introspect this avenue more, and uh, I think we need to move forward on that. Another concept, like of uh, mental wellness, a concept of mental wellness. India is such a huge, diverse country. I where we have huge diverse diversity of our religion, our language, our customs, all these things like. Right? Also, a lot of problems based on all those issues. In India, nearly about 10 to 12 percent of the population have some sort of mental health disorder. And the concept of mental health disorder itself is a stigma in society today. When you say 10 to 12 percent in numbers, it counts to nearly about 140 to 150 million people. Some sorts, maybe small stress or some here and depression, and then to bipolar or schizophrenia or substance abuse, which is increasing every single day amongst the youngsters today. And do we have a system to support it? No. Do we have the experts to help it out? No. But why is this huge burden of mental health disease being absorbed in our society? How it is being absorbed is my way of thinking is like uh, India is a very pious country, a religious country. And every religion has a way of absorbing the stress. The Hindus going to the temple, the Muslims to the mosque, the Christians to the church every week. And I see this mostly, not only in the rural areas, but in as medicine or as science is growing, so as our piousness. Because I see a, a basic structure of a household, a, a lady in the household. That the problems she is facing every day, and mostly related to the finance and her family. It adds on to her burden every day and then it peaks at the end of the week where Friday or Saturday she goes to the temple. And then so Appa, Sami, Bharat Nida So at the end of the week she downloads her problems to God. And then again Saturday, Sunday, it starts and then slowly it increases. Then again, the next Friday, Saturday, she goes to the temple. Again, it downloads. If we didn't, we don't, if we didn't have a system like this, I think it would have, everybody would have crashed by now. Every system, the Christians go to church every Sunday and then put all their burden to God. See, there are beliefs, some people believe in, they don't, but these are some of, I say India is a fascinating country where we have so much of structure to absorb our problems. But again, we have huge challenges, which uh, I think my panelists that in the hours to come are going to address all these issues. Uh, again, again, being a politician, 
mostly from the rural areas. I think we need, we have a long way to go to achieve our dreams. It's a huge population we have, a young population we have. We can call it an advantage, a young population. But then providing good health care, which is a base of wellness, is a huge challenge for the government as well. Eh? India also had had success stories in the healthcare, like uh, Doc Colonel David had said about the National Rural Health Mission, which we have launched way back in 2005. Ten years down the launching of the program, India's maternal mortality rate decreased by about 55 percent, and India's Infant mortality rate reduced by 60% by the National Rural Health Mission. Combining with the 108 emergency services, ambulance services. When we launched the program 108, we had in mind only accidents, traumas, fires, snake bites, the emergencies. And uh, we initiated the program. In the first six months, I, when I reviewed the program, we had a huge surprise. And uh, my secretary had said that the highest number of calls for 108 ambulance was for maternity. It was nearly 24% of the calls were for maternity. And we had no idea that we are going to launch a program where the highest calls are going to go be for maternity. And I was so happy, I had tears rolling down my cheeks. Because to save our mothers and children, that is what we are all here for. And that is what my job as a minister at that time was. I would fail in my duties if I don't address issues of environment related to wellness. Because my wife, she is an environmental listener. I am a hardcore environmentalist, I am a farmer, a doctor and lastly a politician. <laughs> Colonel David had said about uh, COVID-19 affecting us in a big way. From climate change, we have been talking about climate change for about 20-30 years. It has moved on to climate crisis now. Next is going to be climate disaster. And still, we are not doing enough to offset it. The countries are not doing enough to offset it. And as an environmentalist, we are fighting in whatever ways and means. Because environment is directly related to a state of well-being or wellness. And without which, I mean, you see newer diseases coming. In 2002, we had a concept called SARS. Then in 10 years later, in 2011-12, we had MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. And then about eight years later, eight, nine years later, we had a concept called COVID-19. I believe all these are environmental related, climate change related. And then next 10 years, it's not going to be next 10 years, next 5 years we are going to have some problem. I hope not. But all these I believe are environmentally related issues, which the world is failing to address it. We have good policies, we have signatures done by the international community, we had the Paris Declaration, we had the Kyoto Protocol, the Rio Summit, we have the Johannesburg Summit and then uh, COP28 meeting, it's going to happen in Dubai. We had recently the G20 countries meeting in India. In fact, the environmental ministers met in Chennai and said by 2030, 50% reduction of fossil fuel and by 2050, uh, zero carbon emission, all these fancy words. But I don't see we're getting to a point where we are doing what we are saying. No, we are not. And that's, I think, we need to put in a lot of noise on that. A lot of noise should be there. In 
in Chennai, in fact, uh, and I joined Madras Medical College in 1986. That Chennai was completely different than today's Chennai. I loved that Chennai. There were no fancy metros, there were no fancy malls, there were no fancy cars, there were no fancy buildings and pubs or restro bars, <laughs> nothing was there. But I loved that Chennai. Today, Chennai is just a cluster of uh, urban buildings, polluted. There's absolutely no green cover in Chennai. There are no health facilities where you have a walking track or a cycling track or to spend your time with the family and friends. It's just urban jungle out there. You can't breathe good air, you can't get good water. And uh, that's, this Chennai is gone. Chennai has got beautiful rivers. Chennai, in fact, Chennai has got three rivers. Adya River, Kuvam River, and then Kusustale River. And you can't call them rivers anymore. Um, but uh, I think more needs to be done on these. These are all uh, natural resources which we need to protect for our future generation. And uh, the concept of pollution and uh, moving on like a lot of other business modules based on environment and concept of wellness saying that organic, this cliche of organic food, organically grown vegetables, organically grown uh, coffee, organically grown fruits. But then when you dwell deeper into it, I don't see it. 80% of what we, they sell in, as an organic product, it is not organic. And so these are issues I think which we need to go into. I don't know whether we are going to talk about these issues, but I am sounding it like in the, the future I think we need to take up a lot of things which I am trying to sound today. Um, as a person who has been going around uh, the state, going around the country, even though we have huge challenges, but we are proud that India is moving forward on the economic front. But the economic development has it transcended into the social development of people? No. Take the happiness quotient, even though it is loosely linked to wellness. Out of 136 countries, India stands 122nd in the happiness quotient. So, we are not a happy nation, it's just bits and pieces here. Like. So we have to join all those strings and uh, take all these issues which I've, I've said. And I think like uh, it's a long way to go. It's a long way to go and coming back to urban wellness, it's a huge disparity between urban wellness and rural wellness. The concept of rural wellness, I think it is just very, very negligible. And then the urban wellness is something where there are issues to be addressed. We can't compare ourselves to the West. West is completely different. They are, I mean, uh, the, there's a Harvard study which says that because of loneliness, where nearly about 60, 65% of the population are, uh, they lose out about 15 years of their lives. It's like equal to about smoking 15 cigarettes a day. So all these issues like, but here, like I already said that we have a huge support group, a family, our friends, our Indian system of medicine, then of course our religious place is all here to support us in every way, whether it is a mental state or a physical state or intellectual state or a spiritual state or social state. We have social, such huge social groups who support us in every way. So I think I'll just finish I mean, with a little food for thought. This summer, I just, I just digress a little bit like so. This summer has been the hottest summer ever recorded in world history. Next year, we are going to be saying the same thing. 
and then that year later on we are still going to be saying the same thing we have had extreme weather events this year last year the year before every year the 100 year once in a 100 year rain or once in a 200 year drought or once in a 300 years hurricane or cyclone or a typhoon or whatever we call it right and uh, the damage which is causing which is caused by these natural events like i just read read through a couple of in 2022 the in order of damage the amount of damage done hurricane ian in the us and cuba more than 100 billion dollars european drought more than 20 billion dollars flooding in china more than 12 billion dollars drought in china more than 8 bit 0.4 billion dollars flooding in east australia more than 7.5 billion dollars flooding in pakistan 5.6 billion dollars storm unis in europe 4.3 billion dollars drought in brazil 4 billion dollars hurricane fiona in caribbean and canada 3 billion dollars flooding in south africa 3 billion dollars it all adds up to i don't know a year 200 billion dollars a year these are all major events and the minor events put us about 300 to 400 billion dollars a year and we haven't counted india on this list i think these are something which i think we need to wake up and take note of these things and make a lot of noise this is a very knowledgeable crowd and i think uh, it's time that uh, we make a lot of noise on the environmental issue so that pressurize the government whether it is the state or the national government or the world governments because our future generations to come uh, i think ours is the only generation which could take action for the future because we can we can't leave this to the future because by we, they won't have a future so we are in the the current generation has a lot of responsibilities to make a lot of noise and uh, so that the future generations will live a happy life and lastly i just about wildfires uh, heat waves ice storms so everywhere you have in the world you have all these things happening like so i think i'll stop with that and uh, i'd love to share with you a lot of uh, my thoughts of environment uh, climate change i think uh, colonel david could have a concept or a, a meeting on this issue which is something where everybody is is been affected whether it is a rural or an urban uh the entire country the entire world is going to be affected on that leg uh, with these words once again i like to uh, thank dr renuka and uh, colonel david they are wonderful people and uh, colonel david he's come up the hard way in life and is a very such a gentleman he is giving back to the society and uh, i have heard him many times where said he is helping out thousands of families employing them in every way destitutes and i like his concept of uh, helping out war widows where uh, i think nobody has uh, taken care of them and uh, i like the concept uh, colonel david we are all with you we'll help you in every way and uh, i wish this uh, conclave a uh, huge success i'm sure it will be success looking at the speakers and uh, the dignitaries who are attending this and with these words uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me all the very best have a good morning